you for joining me today. We're going to spend the next few minutes talking about confidence. Um, it's one of those subjects that uh, crops up quite a lot uh, as, a, as a coach and uh, in my work with teams and with individuals. And uh, when we're talking about it, it's it's one of those subjects that it's kind of easy to talk about, but quite hard to define. And then we, when we hit on what might be a useful way of articulating what confidence is, it's quite hard for people to grow it. So the next few minutes is about taking a look at some of the things that we might do, some of the strategies we might consider that can help us grow in our confidence. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. You know, I'm sure like most of us, you may have looked at people and thought, how do they keep that level of confidence going? How are they able to be so assertive in sometimes quite challenging situations? And by assertive here, I'm not meaning belligerent or rude or aggressive to other people. What I mean is having that clarity, that, that self-confidence to present your view in a, in a manner that makes it absolutely clear what it is you want. Um, when we see maybe people being overly passive and really just leaving themselves open to all sorts of maybe manipulation, um, accepting ideas that they don't agree with, or others who become aggressive, quite quarrelsome if it's not going their way, this may be a confidence issue. And the more clarity we can have about what confidence is made up, of, made up of its constituent parts, the greater our chances are of putting some of those together and developing our own self-confidence. So if the, the goal is to achieve greater self-confidence, then it's going to be instrumentally in opening some other doors. So if we've got that goal clear, um, we can also be clear about the other doors that are going to open. And our sessions are very much about um, having conversations about your views and your responses to and what you want to adopt from some of the following statements and some of the following ideas. So let's take a look at those now. Okay, so let's take a look at this, shall we? This is about valuing yourself and to do that, you need to understand that your rights, your thoughts, your feelings, everything written down there are just as important as everyone else's. It's not a competition, it's a starting point. Remember, please, that they're not more important. You have no right to trample over everyone else's feelings, beliefs and desires. However, you should believe that you deserve to be treated with respect and stop, please, apologising for everything. We all make mistakes. We all drop a pass. We all sometimes have to raise difficult subjects. There's no need to apologise about it. For the purposes of this presentation, and also if you're working with me, we'll take a look at these three headings. So, identify your needs and ask for them to be satisfied. Don't wait, because you might wait forever. And understand, for you to be a fully functioning, well-performing person, your needs should be met in part or whole. And if they are met in part, then you need to be quite happy about where we've settled here. And maybe have an idea about how you can increase it so that more of your needs are being met. And importantly, we'll work together to find ways that you can get what it is that you want, what you need, without sacrificing or trampling over other people's wants and needs in the process. One of the things that uh, people find it very difficult sometimes to understand is the changes you're making in yourself when you're discovering in increased self-confidence. And this can lead to some quite disturbing internal conversations as you wonder, gosh, you know, have I done the right thing here? You know, would people prefer me as I was to how I am? Well, the second part kind of answers that. As long as you're not trampling over other people, you carry on because that's the right thing to do. And it's the right thing to do because we need to remember that developing your self-confidence is about you building yourself up. It's not about putting other people down. Allow sight control, stand up. What do I mean? Right. Allow yourself to be angry. You know, if, if something has offended you, then you need to allow yourself that anger. Why would you deny it yourself? But you do need to try to remain respectful to the other party because we're actually trying to work with people. We're trying to get to a point where we can compromise and accommodate. Um, resistance isn't going to help that. So let's say what's on our mind, but let's say in a way that protects somebody else's feelings. It doesn't have to be a direct assault on their ego. And that means that you might have to sort of phrase things respectfully and to think about how you want to lead people to, towards that conversation. A degree of emotional control is absolutely important, but there's a difference between control and strangulation. So control your emotions, control your anger. Please don't overthink stuff. And most of all, stand up for yourself. You have a right to.
and you will have heard me use the term overthinking. What do I mean by that? It's when we get trapped in a spiral of thought that isn't actually helping us. We're taking scenarios, we're catastrophizing, we're predicting all sorts of very difficult outcomes that we didn't want. That's not what this is about. It's about having the confidence to say, here's where I want to be with my life, here's the way I want to get there, and giving people an opportunity to come with you, um, giving an opportunity to be part of supporting you and helping you get in there. But f for me, it starts with being able to articulate what it is you want, and to do that without thinking yourself into a corner. So that idea of overthinking is massively important, and it's an area that we often visit in our coaching programs. Okay, so let's take a look at these three words that are really two. Um, accepting compliments graciously. Sweeping generalisation may be, but there's a, more than an element of truth here that people who are lacking in self-confidence find it very difficult to accept compliments. It's almost as if I'm not worthy of that compliment. Well, here we are. If somebody is saying that you've produced a piece of work, that you've helped them, that you've made a positive impact on something they're doing, then please accept that confidence and assume it's been given in good faith. And if it has been good, given in good faith, then that acknowledgement is going to be very powerful in building relationships that are sustaining and, and good to be in. A working relationship, personal relationship, doesn't matter. One of the critical things we have to allow is for ourselves to make mistakes. Sometimes, again, a generalisation, but one that's worth thinking about, is how many times does a lack of confidence prevent you from actually starting something rather than starting it, maybe making a few mistakes, maybe she's never done this before, lacking in experience, acquiring some new knowledge and asking other people for help. Generally speaking, people who you want and need in your life will give you that help. If you've asked for feedback, take it in the spirit given and you're not going to agree with everything. But because people have said something that you don't agree with, no need to get defensive, no need to get angry, no need to overthink yourself into a spiral of what did I do wrong? I wish I'd never raised the subject. There's some strong stuff going on here, isn't there? And it starts with some idea of self-knowledge, knowing where your boundaries are. And if we go beyond that, you've taken advantage of me and I'm not going to do it. So. We can't please everyone. We need to learn to be okay with that. And we also need to reach a point where, actually, if this is okay with my own values, then I do need to go with what's right for me. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to completely and totally refuse to engage with or to, to do with or to attempt. But what we can do is to suggest alternatives that get win-win situations. They're easy to talk about and hard to achieve. Sometimes we need to think about how do we get to compromise? And let's think about a compromise. We get something we want, but we're also going to have to put up with something we didn't want. That's what a compromise is about. But it's a good place to park things until we can eventually move to accommodation, which is something slightly different. If you said no, there is no need to over apologize for this. It, it's done but that it's done in a respectful manner that allows both parties to consider how they can move together in a positive way that gives us a basis for, for, for going forward and for keeping a strong, balanced relationship. And we're coming to the end now and thinking about, well, how do we have these conversations? So here are four quite simple hacks or approaches you can use. And it's actually changing the verbs. Um, and that's really important because I'd like to think of, as we're going through this, the messages that are conveyed here. If we're saying we can't do something, it almost implies that there's a deficiency on our part. If we're saying I won't be doing something, that actually takes uh, a, a slightly different approach because this is talking about advocacy. Uh, this is something I won't be doing. It's not something that, that, that I can't do. I'm actually making a choice not to do it. When we say, I need something. We're actually donating the gaining of that need, the meeting of that need to someone else. 
when we say we want something, we're actually inviting people to come in to say, okay, how can we get this together? Um, how, how can we, we work on this? But we're also very clear that it's it's something, I, I'm, nothing's going to happen to me if I don't get it, but I would rather have it. I want instead of need. Now, let's take a look at the relationship, the difference between choice and necessity. If I have to have something, there's a necessity there, uh, without without which, if I, if I don't get this, things are going to go pretty badly for me. However, if I'm saying I choose to want this, we're suggesting that this is actually bringing us something that we want that will make a positive impact. And I've thought about other things. So there's nothing compelling about choice. It's about having considered the options. This is the way I want to go. If we're using should about ourselves, we're almost becoming our own drill sergeant. You should do that. You must do that. You are compelled to do that. If we're thinking about what we could do, we're maybe developing a more open mindset through the words we use. I could do this. I could do something else. You're returning choice and advocacy and empowerment to yourself. OK, and this brings us to the end. So thanks. Thanks for um for, for joining me here and I hope that what you've seen has been some use to you and you've seen some of the headings that you might be thinking to yourself do you know what I'd like to go a bit deeper with, with that if that is the case or as a general principle it's something you'd like to find out more about please please get in touch with us so I'll leave you with this final image about um, what confidence can bring us it can actually move us to from a place that's maybe quite dark and isolated looking at a pretty barren sort of landscape to one that's actually far more engaged is far more positive and there's far more energy um, about it we we all owe ourselves that opportunity to silence those inner voices you know the overthinking that uh, drown us of our confidence we all owe ourselves an opportunity to envisage what our world would be like if we were more confident and then maybe to reach out and see if there's some skills that you can acquire that help us on that that journey so please do get in touch it'd be great to hear from you and i hope you've enjoyed our presentation